All right, delighted to say we are joined by Tyrone's Connor McKenna. Connor, how are you getting on? Not too bad. Thanks for having me, boys. You seem like a man who is enjoying his football right now. Yeah, just getting back home, I suppose. Been away for six years, playing a, a different sport and learning it. I just sort of always wanted to get home and get back in the Gaelic. And just been the last three weeks or four weeks up with the, the Tyrone's that has been very enjoyable. And just probably the first time really in about a year, really actually enjoyed playing the sport being played. So just happy to be back, yep. Eamon McGee on Twitter over the course of the weekend said Conor McKenna must have been training away with the local GEA club in Melbourne when he was away. Any truth to that? There actually was, yeah. At one stage this year, when I was, this year just really struggled with homesickness and didn't really want to be there. So the club were doing everything to, to help me. So my brother was playing for a team called the Wolf Tones. So on a Tuesday, instead of training with the AFL team, I actually went down in the park and trained maybe probably only for three weeks because then there was the pandemic and I came home. But the club were good enough to let me train once a week with a, a Gaelic side for about three weeks. Right, and that, that's brilliant to hear. So obviously you came to them and said that you were missing home a bit and, and they said we'll do everything in our power. And part of that was actually to, to get you back kicking a round ball. Yeah, so let me go home for three or four weeks and then he came back and I still just wasn't in general. So they said what, what else think would work. So I said I want to train once a week with a Gaelic team and they were very good. They let, they let me do that with, with my brother and on Tuesday night and then it really only lasted probably three weeks and then I had to come on Monday because of a... COVID-19 but yeah they, they tried their very best to, to keep me happy. How quickly did you pick up the skills again playing Gaelic football because I think we've all been very impressed with how the last couple of weeks have gone. At the start though was it the same way when the cameras weren't on you? Hey, I don't know I suppose when there's a few, few of us with seven of us over there uh, Irish lads in Melbourne so every month or so we could kick about any of the few Gaelic balls a lot of the time and yeah, probably just being back for four weeks, a bit of training first was probably a bit scrappy to start, but then just been confident and stuff after every training session. And it's just good, good to see a pen off, sort of. So. Do we sometimes overplay the skills thing, transferring your AFL skills to the round ball? Is it actually easier than we perhaps uh, give you credit for? It? Like we, we, we say it's kind of like the, these aliens skills that you're bringing to the, to the pitch once again with Tyrone. I presume it actually comes quite naturally to you again after a couple of games or training sessions. Yeah, so it does. I I haven't really been working much since he's been home for the last five six weeks. So I have been down to pitch a couple of three right. times a week just during the day. So it was a bit a bit wayward to start kicking, but just sort of you can see it just gradually get better the more you do. And it's just sort of that repetition. I talked to Marty Clark and Tech anybody, and they said when they came home, they just did a lot of that sort of back to your basics, just kicking and and so on and stuff. So just got a lot of that in. Just hopefully it comes comes a bit quicker. How many hours are we talking here down on the pitch? Oh jeez, I don't know. Hey. I suppose around maybe three times a week, probably for an hour or two, probably just to start kicking shots and just kicking the balls or just getting just getting used to it again. That, that was really just the base of it. And then back up the train train once or twice a week, I train with them, and then just good to finally get a few games under the belt. How big an advantage is it as a professional athlete, former professional athlete, coming into an amateur setup? Is the difference that big? Not really. I, I it's a bit different now this year because Tone obviously there's not full training. You only train only train twice a week with the Tone setup, so. It's not the full program, but when I when I was leaving, the, the Gaelic setup was as good as the setup I've been in. Really, like for for an amateur sport, it's it's unbelievable what the players commit to and and give give to their county. So I don't think there's a big gap. There is just a small gap, which you'll never be able to close just because of the the, the professionalism. But it's definitely not a big gap. No, you must have been flying coming back into training, given the directions of the two seasons. I guess GA players were were just coming into their season. Do you feel that that stood you in very good stead coming into this year's championship and in the aftermath of those two league games? Yeah, I suppose I was just uh, looking forward to getting back and playing and just probably I was training for probably three or four months before then by sort of rolling lockdown. So probably they put my, a wee bit ahead and just came back in the swing things and just getting them games around back gives me a bit more confidence. So I'm looking forward to hopefully a few more this year. Uh, you mentioned the homesickness that you went through in Australia. How constant a battle was that for you? Was it something that you had to deal with from the very off? Yeah, well, so when you're 18, you're going out, you think you can take on the world. So that was sort of my mindset. And then you quickly realise that you're on your own in the outside of the world. And it sort of hit me when Throne under 21s won the All-Ireland my first year. That sort of hit home that I sort of missed that. And then sort of from, all, from then, probably for about a year, it was pretty bad. And then when I started playing FL games, and I, I sort of got better and then probably after four years when I sort of became a consistent player I sort of completed everything I wanted to complete over there and that's when I just sort of lost a lot of interest in playing football and just didn't really enjoy the AFL or was just wasn't enjoying training and being with the lads probably as much as I used to so it definitely was a constant thing yeah. Who did you have over there with you? So the vice lord no one so I moved over when I was 18 and then I moved into the host family so they do that for a lot of the young Irish boys you get put over into 
a family. So I was lucky I could on very well my family and still contact them today. So that was good. And then after probably three years, my brother moved over. So him and his uh, fiance moved over and I lived with them for the last two and a half years. So probably really only for them being there for the second half of my career probably wouldn't have lasted that long, I don't think. Is the part you miss about home all to do with sport? Are there other elements of Irish life that you missed or is, is it really just the football? It Probably the main one was the football, to be honest. I right. have probably nine mates in Sydney at the minute, but the main one was Gaelic. Just not just going out and playing a sport that I just knew I wasn't given 100% to even in training or or playing, I just knew I wasn't myself. And I, I never thought it would be like that. I thought no matter what I played, I'd just I'd love to play it and give everything. But it just got to the stage this year where just probably money wasn't enough for me. It was just I, I wasn't playing a sport that I wasn't enjoying anymore and I just had to make that decision. And just now I'm just over the moon with the decision I made and just happy to be home. How hard a thing is that to appreciate when, as you say, the money is a big factor in it when it's not like you went over there and failed. A lot of people have gone over to the AFL and, and have come home as a result of not making it. You are, by the standards of a lot of Irish people who've gone down there, an extremely successful AFL player. Were you surprised that that didn't lead to happiness in the end? Not, uh, I was, I, I, the back of my mind, I always said that I was coming home after two or three years and then probably being there six years was a bit of a surprise for me. So people always did. I always say I want to go home, want to go home. People sort of probably thought, thought it was a front, but hmm. then it sort of just continues to go on for six years. So for me, not really. I sort of always knew at some stage it just wasn't going to be enough for me and Gaelic was always going to be too much of a pull. So that just, whether that was going to be two years in or six years in, so I didn't really know, but I knew at some stage it would definitely overcome that. Was there a specific moment this year then when you realised I'm going to pack it in or was it a, a build-up and a slow accumulation over a period of time? Just, a, not really. So after the end of last year, I flew back out. and After my, for my first time, I flew back out. It's just been, it's like heartbreak leaving every time, sort of. So just never really enjoyed it. And then this time, just when I get out there, normally it takes me like two weeks. I'm not too bad getting back in the swing things, but just probably three or four months in, I was still the exact same. Just was going to trade and was walking off pit sessions and stuff and just didn't really want to be there. So I think it was just pretty obvious to players around me too that just I wasn't, my heart wasn't in it anymore. So I think it was pretty obvious from the back out. It was probably going to be my last year, just how long it really lasted. And then with Gaelic getting called off this year, I'm back out after the pandemic, which if Gaelic probably was on, I don't know if I would have, would have done, but it just probably made it easier for me to go back out without Gaelic happening. What are your teammates and your coaches saying to you when they realise that you're walking off the training pitch in an unhappy place? Yeah, they're all supportive of me. Like, so there's a probably a group of five or six boys I'm really friendly with and they were they all knew for the last six years struggled with it. And then when I actually finally made the decision to come home and retire, they were just over there over the moon for me because they knew it was the right decision and that mm. I was actually loving loving the decision of going home. Like it was just when I actually retired and tired the players, it just felt like a complete relief of just a weight off my shoulders. It just felt like I actually made the right decision for the first time in a long time. Did your own personal COVID situation <laughs> exacerbate things at all? Because that was a pretty mad story. The, the amount of negatives and false positives and uh, actual positives that, that, that came through was, it's a story I could, I could barely keep up with. Did that affect things? Uh, not, at that stage, even before that, I was always in the mindset I didn't want to be here probably much longer. So I don't think so. I've never really had much time for the media in Australia, to be honest. They were, the way I see it, they get a lot of access to AFL players and the way they live and the way they play and they don't really give a lot of respect to players. So, it's not really something that I took much, much notice, of, notice, of, notice of, to be honest. No. When you say that they don't pay much respect to players, is this something that you've noticed before the coronavirus yeah. story where was stuff written about you or, or said about not you personally? By, no, not personally me, right. but just in general, they just seem to have a real negative. If it's not a negative story, it's not a good story, that sort of way. And a lot of time it's uh, come, whoever comes out with a story first, no matter if it's wrong or right or the truth, it doesn't really matter. So... It, uh, just something that, that, that I think is a problem over there and it definitely change. What was the hardest thing about the part of, of saying goodbye to Essendon? What, what, did they make any last ditch attempt to keep you? Was it made any <laughs> bit more complicated than a fairly straightforward decision to just fly home? No, nah, not really. So the, obviously I tried for the last probably three years to let me go home from my brother's wedding the year before, which probably was frowned upon. But Mm. Uh, they were very good to me. They gave me every opportunity to be happy, and just it just wasn't working. And then I had a meeting with them, and I honestly believe I had a meeting six weeks before that. It would have been exactly my come. I would have just probably retired in the spot. When I actually finally started to talk about it with the coaches, I just sort of knew I was probably landing myself that I didn't really want to be here anymore. Has there been a moment already when you <clears> realised that coming home has been the right thing? Has there been a training session, even a moment in the couple of games when you thought to yourself, right, this is this is my happy place? Uh, literally the moment I told them I retired was just a, a complete relief just knowing right. that 
because when I came home, I suppose I was home for normally two months at time, but it was just a burden of people constantly going to you when he flam back and when's the next season started. And it sort of just always played in the back of my mind, probably. So to actually know I'm coming home, people just actually whack him home, not going when he going back. It's just having that the freedom to know I'm home for the future, not, not having to worry about going back. Right, so it was almost the limbo <laughs> that you've been existing uh, in the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I just knew it was going to happen. And as soon as I actually right. said it and came out to the, the public, it was just a complete relief, really. But it's great to see you back from a GA perspective, Connor. I must ask about uh, not the, the goals that have come over the last uh, couple of weeks, but the passes more than anything. The pass for Derek Canavan's goal at the weekend is something that's been shared quite a bit uh, on social yeah. media. How much of that role do you enjoy, the playmaker that comes with being number 11 in a team? Yeah, I suppose enjoy. You just, you can, it's good there. You can change in a few different roles, hopefully. And hopefully in burst trying up the goal, you can probably play half back if you want to midfield. So just having a different a different mindset and going in different positions and giving different players opportunity to change. I think it's very important in a, a team to, to be able to adjust to what other teams do and just give us the option of putting me full forward or putting someone else in half forward and just keep swapping up and, and just really keep games guessing. So it's definitely a role, a role I enjoyed. I played it a lot when it was minors with Tyrone. So it's definitely something I enjoy, yeah. Was there a big conversation about how Tyrone were going to make a little bit more of a shift last week insofar as there's been a little bit, a little bit less hand passing, a lot more emphasis on the kick passing, a far more expansive style of play from Toronto at the weekend than we've seen in recent times? Yeah, it's probably just a weird one for me because I'm only probably in the setup probably three mm. weeks and then it's just obviously the first game of Thunder Ball was probably the first time boys were playing together for five or six months so it was probably just getting to know each other again and just getting the swing things, and then you've seen it probably came out a bit better against Mayo just for playing probably a bit more free and probably without any shackles on. So just a definitely look better in the first half and just if I'm going to that mindset with Donegal next week, hopefully we do the job. That's the thing because we've seen a lot of risk-averse play happening in Gaelic football over the last couple of years that when a pass like yours to, to Derek Canavan does happen, it's something that everybody rejoices with. I know Dermot Connolly would have got similar praise in that Dublin setup over the last couple of years. Do you think we're getting to a stage now where inter-county players are being encouraged to take the risk because the reward setup is so great. Yeah, from my left, it looks changed a lot in the way the game's played, probably. But I definitely think it's something that should be encouraged because I just I don't I don't feel you should play a game without taking a risk. That's how you, I suppose you you can prove you're you're good enough. But it's definitely something I'd be encouraging as a, as a teammate, and hopefully the manager will keep keep encouraging us to do it. When you say Gaelic games has changed between your two stints, but what do you mean by that? What's been the biggest difference? Well, probably just the defensive aspect of it, but there's a lot of team defence. It's probably sort of similar to AFL when everybody sort of comes back and attacks in a, in a group, whereas when I was back in my day, I was sort of more staying full forward and don't really do much defending. So <laughs> it's just a bit different in that aspect of it, but it seems to be swaying back towards the forwards again. So uh, just probably, I've just made a slight difference in training and the way, the way it's going. You've timed your comeback perfectly, basically, is, is what you're That's saying. I'm hoping that, yeah, I'm definitely hoping that. Uh, just just to, to wrap up then, Donegal this Sunday, I presume uh, you had a very close eye on the amazing clashes between these two counties over the last couple of years. So you know exactly what the recent rivalry is like. Yeah, it's definitely been a big rivalry. So it'll be a massive game now. I'm uh, really looking forward to it. Obviously, got a better for two weeks ago. Uh, I think it'll be a different game on, on Sunday, hopefully. But uh, definitely, we have to take a few steps in the right direction. And hopefully, we can do it. And do you feel, I don't know, there's a little bit of the pressure off this Tyrone team because I guess when Cahill's injury happened, they would have got written off to a certain point. I don't think we realised you were coming back at that point. But do you feel that the expectation isn't as great as it might be, say, next year? I do and I don't because it's, it's normally you'd have the backdoor system, whereas this year it's straight knockouts, which adds an element to it. So it's just probably going to be who can deal with the pressure better in the day and it's, it could be over and... This time next week, we sit up with OGA left to play this year, so it'll be very disappointing. But I suppose that's just the way it is. At least next year, if you meet Donegal first round and it doesn't go your way, you can, beat, you can go through the backdoor system, hopefully. But it's just a strange one because it could be over in, in a week, really. So hopefully not. Connor, welcome back. Best of luck Sunday. Thank you very much. Pleasure.